Do you think that NFTs have changed your life? <laughs> Here's um, the Fortune magazine that I did. Apparently, this is the People's Magazine of Taiwan. That's me and Steve Aoki. There's the Unisop animation. It was actually mind-blowing that anybody would want to own this digital piece. But then the more you think about it, the more it makes sense. Like, why would somebody want to own a physical art piece? Because they like looking at it. It's the same thing for a digital one, right? NFTs are completely changing the game in how you and I consume art. That idea to some could feel very dystopian, but it's a fundamental revolution that we are about to witness. Blockchain will revolutionize the world for good. We want to be part of that change. For my first NFT, I really poured my heart into making what I thought was kind of like a trippy, mesmerizing animation, and it ended up selling for over half a million dollars. I think I've been extremely lucky, but it is a long game that we're playing, and uh, this technology is going to be around for a while. Parker, take one. I always get this question, you know, I can right click and save, you know, that NFT. Why do I need to pay $7.6 million to buy it? <laughs> Look, I can take a photo of a Mona Lisa and then say, this is mine, but nobody's gonna believe it because there is something known as provenance or proof of ownership. So an NFT, a non-fungible token is a unique copy and it's a contract to say that you own this digital piece of art. And that is very powerful for many, many regards. To compare and understand this, let's talk about cryptocurrencies first. Those are fungible tokens, meaning you and I can exchange them as many times as we want. However, an NFT, you know for sure that this is an authentic piece of art because you can easily prove it by looking at the blockchain. The Christie's auction for digital artist Beeple, the final bid? Oh my God! $69 million. Oh my gosh. Uh, as of six months... Artists pre-NFTs, you know, really existed on a model where they were making 30 cents on the dollar. There is typically a 50% commission that's taken from their gallery. And then artists are responsible for their own health insurance, their studio costs. NFTs really change the framework of allowing them to not only access capital in a much more efficient way, but also realize the upside as their works go into the market. As a creator, you decide what the art piece is, you decide where it's minted, you decide how it's sold. You also get royalties from not just the first sale, but forever sales. NFTs have made it a very level playing field for many people to jump in with both feet and experiment. People Pleaser is one example, and now is a very well-renowned NFT creator. I enjoy everything that's creative, and I just really love the process of seeing something, you know, go from nothing to coming to life. Before this, I worked on several movies. Film already really inspires me, but visual effects even more so because you're creating something out of nothing on the computer by just pressing some buttons, and I think that's pretty cool. In 2020, during the pandemic, as a means to make some money on the side, I started looking more into crypto again, and then I discovered decentralized finance. I realized that there were no creative efforts in marketing material at the time, and then so I saw an opportunity to insert my own skill set into the space. And so more and more people started paying attention to my work. 20 animations later, Unisop hit me up. So around that time too was when the Asian hate crimes was really bad in America. I got in touch with this group of volunteers called Stand With Asians. My NFT raised over half a million dollars. And then so we were able to distribute grants of $25,000 to 24 different nonprofit organizations. If there's anything that I can do through philanthropy, through my creations, that also makes me feel a lot more rewarded. Here's the infamous X times Y equals K animation. You can see the iconic bidding history here. What was the most touching was the fact that a lot of my friends had come together to support me. The fact that they named it Please Her Dao was very touching. Please Her Dao started specifically to acquire one piece of art of people pleasers. I knew it was gonna sell for more money than I had. And so I just sent out a tweet. I was like, hey, does anyone want to like create a quick DAO and put our money together and bid on this together? Jameis responded to that tweet as well as uh, some other people. That's how it got started that day. The decentralized autonomous organization is just a novel concept. 
You have a lot of people working together who are in agreement, but also have a vote. Ultimately, the definitive concept of a DAO is anyone can participate. The membership that we look for is people that want to do something good in the world. That's always kind of been a core tenant. It's very obvious what our membership is constituted of when you're buying Edward Snowden's piece, Jimmy Wales' Wikipedia's piece, Nadia from Pussy Riot, Tor, Ross Ulbricht, and Mother Wu Tang. <laughs> it's as seamless as writing one line of code to change individuals' lives now. Why not take the opportunity to help? The technology itself is really revolutionary, and I am somebody who literally experienced how NFTs are changing the game for creatives. I auction off a piece, then I take that same money and I go back and I buy NFTs from other people, and then it creates this chain reaction of everybody being rewarded by participating in the space. I think we'll start to see a lot more use of NFTs beyond just art. Gaming, concert tickets, transportation tickets. Driver's licenses should be NFTs so that we never have to go through the pain of going to DMVs again, <laughs> you know? And for myself as an artist, I don't really know where it's going, but what I care about fundamentally is that what I'm doing has a positive impact on society and that it is artistically meaningful and entertaining people at the same time so that whatever I create is always making people feel something.